All right, well next let's talk about the units of heat. Well, I've been referring to heat as energy, so yes, heat has energy units. Heat is a form of energy, and we kind of hinted at this when we talked about where the kinetic energy went in our momentum collision. We said that most of that energy went into heat, that it, these things crashed and jiggled up the particles inside the carts, and that is where that energy went. So most commonly, we're going to be using food energy units, or calories. And recall, one calorie is 4.186 joules. And remember, joules are actually a pretty small unit. A calorie is not much energy at all. In fact, one calorie is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. And I'll take this moment to mention a useful conversion. For water, one gram is one milliliter. One milliliter of water has a mass of one gram, so you can convert back and forth, swapping out grams for milliliters, but only for water. Other things have different densities, and this is only true for water. But we'll be using water a whole lot in our examples of heat. So, we already mentioned this as well, but Really, the calories you see on the back of your, uh, your sodas and your nutritional information for food are capital C calories, or kilocalories, a thousand of those little calories, which means one capital C calorie is 4,186 joules. Well, I've got a espresso drink on my desk right now. It has 70 calories in it. That's really 70 capital C calories which means that's something like 280,000 or about 300,000 joules. I'm drinking 300,000 joules in just one drink. We consume a whole, whole lot of joules every day, about 2,000 of them. 2,000, oh, sorry, not joules, 2,000 capital C calories, which would be something like 8 million joules of energy. We consume a lot of joules. Um, joules are a fairly tiny unit. But really, this is what you see on your nutrition facts, capital C calories, which is really a thousand of those little calories. So this def definition of the calorie actually also defines specific heat, which is one of our most important definitions for this chapter. Specific heat is defined as the amount of heat that will increase the temperature of one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. Well, that certainly sounded very similar to the definition of calorie, and in fact, the definition of the calorie defines water's specific heat. One calorie will increase one gram of water one degree Celsius. Specific heat is given by the letter lowercase c, and for, cal uh, for, for water, that lowercase c is one calorie, that's how much heat, to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius, or if you wanted to use joules, 4.186 joules are necessary to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. And sometimes we use larger amounts of things. I mean, we're talking about grams here. We typically use kilograms. Well, that's fine. We can scale up with actually not changing these numbers at all. We change joules to kilojoules, we, choose, we change grams to kilograms, and alternatively, we could use 4.186 kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius. This is useful for large amounts of things. I, think, I believe there's a homework problem with you know, someone getting into a warm tub. Well, you would certainly measure a human's mass in kilograms as opposed to grams, and it's a little more convenient to use kilojoules per kilogram in that instance. All right, well, why did we define specific heat? We define specific heat to prepare ourselves to define the most important equation from this chapter, Q equals MC delta T. Now, I'll pause to explain all of these things. So we needed C, specific heat, for this equation. So what does this tell us? Well, Q, that is actually the letter given for heat energy. Q, that is the amount of heat energy we would be giving to something or taking away from something. So that's the amount of heat energy, 
What is the MC delta T? Well, M is mass. That tells you how much of something there is. C defines how it changes its temperature, how that heat energy changes its temperature. The amount of heat that will increase the temperature of one gram of a substance. So this tells you really what you're changing the temperature of. So this is how much of a substance, what substance it is, the specific heat specific to that substance, and then you get some change, delta T. Remember delta being final minus initial, that tells you how the temperature changes. So this much heat will change this amount of something, that's the something, this amount of temperature. This amount of heat changes this much of something, this much in temperature. And if we look at the units here, the units for C might have seemed weird, but they're set up specifically, no pun intended, to make the units of this equation work. So what are the units of Q? Well, we know that should be energy units. It's going to be the units of M times the units of C times the units of T, grams times calories per gram degree Celsius times degrees Celsius. The grams on the bottom cancel the grams from the M. The degrees Celsius on the bottom cancel the degrees Celsius from the temperature. And what we are left with is calories or perhaps joules if you had used the other version of specific heat. But nonetheless, we are left with energy units when we combine MC delta T. But this is a huge equation. This defines how much heat it takes to change something's temperature. It's different for everything because of that specific heat, C. But I'll leave you guys with a, a question at the end of this video. No matter how much heat you add to water, it can never get hotter than 100 degrees Celsius. You keep adding heat, its temperature keeps going up and up and up, but it hits a wall at 100 degrees Celsius. And I'll leave you with the question of why. So think about that for a minute before we get to our, our next video. Why can't you get water hotter than 100 degrees Celsius?